of Zuffy's private group over? And if so, please join uh, Trevor and um, Zuffy's uh, private group over. And what channel is that? Uh, Zuffy. Zuffwick. He's down in wing two right now. Be advised, uh, Zephyr, if you are or are not in Zephy's uh, private group, Trevor is extremely uh, intoxicated over. Vicar, Roger. that's yeah. clear. Go ahead, over. Victor Bescore, this is true. You, you are now being broadcast live over YouTube. Ahoy, ahoy. Anybody this net, anybody this net, this is Trevor, radio check over. I can copy. Read your Lima Charlie over. Uh, Blazewick Lima Charlie, this is Trevor. Uh, are you and Zephy's uh, private group over? Negative. I'm in uh, open chat, general chat. Roger. If you could meet me in uh, Zephy's uh, private group, uh, that would be uh, amazing. Over. Roger. Four wing activity. Victor Bescore, Victor Bescore, this is Trevor. Over. <laughs> it's in that Nick. I acknowledge that you are a YouTube. I am good to go with a YouTube broadcast. Uh, zero problems with that. Over. Break, break, break. Am I having problems with No, the... no, no. We hear you. We yeah. acknowledge you. Okay. Roger. Uh, this is uh, Trevor out. Trevor, I have to ask, what libations are you part uh, uh, partaking of? Uh, Roger, it's a uh, semi autumn Oktoberfest, and a little bit of uh, Maker's Mark. Over. Sounds very tasty. Uh, Roger, it's a gentleman's um, drink, and I am not a gentleman, so fuck you, America. Hey, I'm gonna have to uh, get off for a bit. We got a bad storm rolling through here, so. All right, man, be safe. Mm -hmm. We should uh, practice our uh, radio etiquette a little bit better. As in what? Use proper brevity? Victor Bescore, this is Trevor, over. Uh, go ahead, Trevor. This is Victor Bescore, over. Uh, Roger, I, w I, I hear you wear women's panties, over. Uh, only on the weekend and only thongs. Over. Over. Roger, you didn't say over. Roger, I prefer thong myself over. Victor best score. 
Uh, Victor Bescore, this is Trevor over. Go ahead, Trevor. Um, I just want to say you can go fuck yourself over. Uh, uh thank you very much. Over. Uh, 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 uh Trevor, this is Victor Bescore, over. Victor Bescore, go for Trevor. Um, uh, Trevor, it, does the smell of leather excite you? Over. Uh, Roger, Victor Bescore, only if it's Astral Shaps over. Did you just send me a PM there, Victor Bescore? Over. Uh, no, uh, no, I didn't. I'm in the process of flying across the universe. Oh, Roger, uh, Victor Bescore, I thought that that it excited you so much that I said that I find uh, Astral Shaps exciting that you sent me a PM over. I uh, know. I, I I figured that Astral Chaps would excite you over. Oh, Roger, the Astral Chaps uh, do excite me, and I'll be re, uh, turning to mining over, but I'm going to find out what this PM was about, and it may not, or may have included you over. Uh, Roger, Victor Bescore, this is Trevor, over. Go ahead, Trevor. Uh, be advised, it was some, just, some bullshit attached to, um, Blacklight, over. Uh, okay, it, 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 I'll take it under advisory. I would also like to point out, being that we're going live over the internet to the world, um, certain things are restricted on live open channels. That's why I did not include the system or the task included in um, the blacklight operation over. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, be advised. How fucking dumb do you think I am, Victor Bescourt? Uh, I have no assumptions on your intelligence, over. That is bullshit. You know better, Victor Bescourt, over. I assume nothing. Over. Just because I've been drinking doesn't make me stupid, Victor Bescore. Over. I I to I wholeheartedly agree with you. <sighs> if anything, it enhances your personality. Over. Well, be advised, my personality is at 120 right now, but my real shots are like a uh, a 10. Over. And be advised, that's why I'm doing mining. Uh, not any actual good or anything over. It, it, yes, I, I understand. It, you want to safely uh, gather nuggets. I, I get that. Uh, be advised, I think you're a fucking nugget. Over. Well, I would be an Italian flavored nugget, if so. Over. Uh, be advised. Um, what, what does your birth certificate say, over? Uh, my birth certificate, as far as what? Gender, uh, ethnicity, species? Be more specific, thank you. The, does it say you were born abroad, or does it say you were born in the United States under a state, over? I was created in the United States and I emerged in the state of New Jersey. Over. So be advised, you are not Italian. You are American. Over. Uh, but uh, from a heritage of Italian, uh, Cypriot, and German. Oh, yeah. Over. Uh, that means I. Whoa, whoa, wait, not over. Fuck you. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> By that right, I would. Go I ahead. Would I'm, a, I, I'm a Viking, but but I'm not a Viking because that's what that's what my grandparents, 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 50 years 
seventy million years, whatever, hundreds of years down the line. Did right? That's not what I did. I'm not a Viking. I was born in the United States. Uh, so I'm my a ranger. So okay. my my question I'm to you ranger. is: Do you or do you not like to exploit villages for their loot and and women? Yeah, but I'm a ranger. That's what we do. That's American. There's nothing more American than a fucking ranger. There's nothing fucking more American than airborne. I mean, I was in the 82nd Airborne Division. We were all Americans, right? Yes, you were. Mm, ranger? That, 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 that pretty much says, you know fucking American you go back to fucking history and you look and you look at Lewis and Clark what they did is I mean they were basically rangers scouts for America that's what I did I fought for American freedom I didn't fight for whatever the hell the Vikings were fighting for which kind of seems stupid to me you know Minus the, f the fact of colonization of England and all that stuff. But fighting each other made no sense. Just for the art of battle. That still makes no sense at the end of the day. If you are not further progressing your belief or cause. And you are only fighting because you were challenged and you're fighting for honor. Well, I don't really see too much glory in that. Over. Frameshift drive charging. What about fighting for profit? Is that bad? Over. Well, in a video game, Victor best score. It is what it is. But in real life, you might want to reevaluate your uh, your beliefs. I think democracy. Freedom and a sense of pride, and to protect those who you love is worth fighting for. Everything else, you could say religion. I don't think that's worth fighting for because I think if people believe in your faith, then they will see that fighting is for your religion is kind of stupid because if they believe in your message they believe in your message if they don't they don't and forcibly believing in someone's message is not what God Allah Jesus whatever you want to call them is what they want they want you to come to them with a with a heart that is pure and and free of sin not full of hate and anger but freedom democracy and a chance to better yourself now that's worth fighting for over I, I agree with you over And I just tested out my uh, repair limpets uh, to repair my hull, and I am satisfied with its repairability. Well, they do. Per they actually perform pretty well. Yeah, I, I agree. Right, so here's a question. Should you bring a D scan a scanner to a Democratic Party convention just to scan out the douchebags? Well, class D scanner doesn't work that way, by the way. Well, 
what? D scanner doesn't stand for douchebag scanner? Mm, no. No, not at all. Unfortunately. Niles, how do you feel about that? Niles is gone. Oh, Niles is gone! Oh, Adama's here! That's right, he's been replaced by this douchebag. Uh, by the way, Canuck, I had the conversation with Slim and Shock M. Plans will proceed as as we previously discussed. Well, that's exciting. So you have a promotion uh, pending. Whoa, that's pretty fantastic. Ooh, ooh, drop his ooh. Uh, promotion and phonetic alphabet to me. Uh, I don't think I can. I was bad in English. Adama. Do it in phonetic alphabet. God, I don't know all the letters. Marshall, Alpha. And then I have to learn how to spell, too. Hang on. Uh, that's not right. Anyways. <laughs> Mike. Well, Alpha. What is M? Mike. 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 Alpha. What is R? Uh, Romeo. Romeo. Romeo Samuel. What's H? No, nope, Sierra. Sierra. See, I'm fine. I don't even know it myself. <laughs> I thought you were in the military, dude. Dude, I was a civilian in the military. Oh my god. <laughs> I saw. It wasn't the last time. Maybe it was the night before. I heard you say that I was in the military, dude. I was not in the military. I've never spoken such words. I have said things like I was in Afghanistan. Because I was in Afghanistan. But I was a civilian. Okay. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, Golf, Hotel, India, um, Kilo, Lima, Mike, November, Oscar, Papa, uh, Quebec, uh, Romeo, Sierra, Tango, um, uniform with um, whiskey, no, uniform whiskey, Yang, uh, Yankee Zulu. Hi, Dama. Hmm. What's up, Niles? How, how are you doing? Uh, pretty terrible, but so uh, <laughs> that's beside oh, the point. Oh, no. <laughs> no worries, though. No worries. I just like being honest with that question. I'm actually going to head out to the, the Pipe Nebula and start checking out. Uh, I'm going to run some tests to see uh, what I can get in an hour on the triple overlap and what I can get in an hour on that inner double overlap. Because I actually, I'm really hopeful for that double overlap. That looks really, really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in, yeah. I was looking at the picture. I went, it's a pretty weak triple, but... Uh... Yeah, that the double, double is strong. fucking awesome. Yeah. So do we have a new member on comms today? Yes, we do. Uh, Tokoloshi is uh, Zephy's, uh, Zephy's bud. He's uh, Zephy's kind of given him a tutorial through the through the newbie area, and there's a there's quite a lot of uh, new members lately, Victor. I may have a I may have to give a group spiel. <laughs> One of your famous uh, group. Are you still doing that shit? I always welcome new members. It's the only thing I get to do. <laughs> you know what, Victor? Like if you get, <laughs> you, you never gave me your group spiel. Number one. I gave you a spiel when you first joined. No, you did not. I did definitely too. I spiel everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded a bit, uh, a bit naughty. I, 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 I know. I, if you I did, know. here lately, I'm just full of shoes. What, do you want a re-spiel? I can't even say it because it's so funny. Well, I've only been a member for like... Ever? God, four years, five years? When did this game drop? 2015 or 16? 
you know what? I don't remember. I think 15 maybe? Or was that closed beta? I think I've only been a member since 2016 then. I think I'm going to jump in the other channel to give the spiel to the new member. Right up. Alright. Have fun. And it's got like next, next to like no jump range, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hello, sorry. gentlemen. Hey, hello. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to disturb uh, you guys while you're in the middle of something. I was wondering if I can have a minute of your time. Yeah, what's up, bro? Okay, so first, let me state for disclosure, we're going live over YouTube as of right now because I, I am streaming the journey out to Beagle Point. Mm -hmm. Um. But since there's a new member on, I, I, I feel it's important for me to give him the spiel. And <laughs> and Zephy knows what I'm talking about. Right, Zeph? Mm-hmm. What, the spanking? Uh, well, the spanking comes later from Adama, but, you know. This is, <laughs> this is the verbal spanking. <laughs> What's up, bro? So, hold on one second. Alright, so, um, to, to, how do you pronounce your name? Tokoloshi. Tokoloshi. Wow, I love it. It's like a tongue twister. Alright, I'm gonna call you T. <laughs> Big T! <tea. laughs> um, let me introduce myself. I'm Victor Beskor. I'm founder, Sky Marshal, uh, much titled, high. Uh, uh, exalted one, supreme <laughs> leader, uh, conqueror of the galaxy, and whenever a new member comes into the fleet, I like to take a few minutes, introduce myself, and thank that new member for joining. Um, because within the Earth Defense Fleet, we feel that it's important to thank new members to uh, and ahead of time for the slavery that we're going to put you through. Um, <laughs> Trust me, I'm South African. I've lived through slavery. <laughs> <laughs> also, so slavery. hard, hard work for no pay is going to be no problem. Great. Um, oh. so uh, it's not going to work. <laughs> well, <laughs> but uh, it, we well, in the fleet. There is no, there is no mandate of participation. There is appreciation of participation. And uh, I like to take a few minutes to answer any questions you may have about the fleet, what the fleet is doing, where we're going, our thought process behind what we do, and explain a little bit about our history. Um, the Earth Defense Fleet is one of the first 10 player minor, uh, player minor factions introduced into the game. Uh, I founded it within the first few months of of the launch of Elite Dangerous and uh, we also are in a way canon within the law of Elite Dangerous since we participated with Drew Wagner in one of his storylines and our fleet was mentioned in the his last book and a couple of our members were also mentioned in the in the book by name okay. uh, our main focus within the fleet has always been the BGS, growing our minor faction and taking over the galaxy for the Federation. We feel that's important. But here we don't mandate participation. Uh, we like to reward it. We like to uh, uh, um, thank people who participate in the BGS. Um, <clears throat> If you have any questions, feel free to ask. There's no such thing as a dumb question. I can't guarantee the intelligence of the answers you may find. Um, That's because so they're games. yeah, that like like the level of intelligence within the fleet fluctuates between complete drooling on the floor idiot to you know we've had scientists, so it's scary. 
Uh, I, I fall right in the middle. I'm a truck driver, so I know how to curse in multiple languages. And, um, oh, yeah, I'm a machinist. So, yeah, there's something in common. <laughs> and, and, and I love to scream out the window. I'm a truck driver in New York City, as a matter of fact. Um, okay. Uh, the only thing we ask, uh, we do have people from all around the world, from all uh, ethnicities and, and religions and so on and so forth. We have many multiple gender people because I personally feel that some people, they may be one person, but they may be multiple genders. That's only my thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we ask people to respect each other. We're, we're building a community, a friendship, and we're here to give people access to content that Frontier doesn't provide. And, you know, so we only ask that people respect each other. It doesn't mean you have to watch how you talk. I, again, I talk like a truck driver, so fuck them all. <laughs> oh. Um, but, uh, we do have we do have girls who play within the fleet and so respect is the main concern and we the only thing we have is a no drama policy you know uh, we don't like I've noticed yeah because <laughs> we we've, we've had to remove a few members because of them creating drama or you know just just being disrespectful but it, it, it's very very rare because I, I find that most people are just generally nice. That's how I get over on them, you know? Being part Sicilian, I have this thing about money under the table kind of deal. I love it. But that being said, welcome to the fleet. I hope you have fun. And um, I, I hope it, they'll feel free to make any suggestions or... Uh, create any kind of event that you want to create as time goes on and um, thank you for joining oh, no problem man I'm planning on staying so. all I... part of the all part of the continued effort to grow the combat division of EDF yeah and and oh uh, let me make this other point um, now that you're an EDF member uh, feel free to invite friends and family within, you know, th that you have who either play Elite Dangerous or play other games onto the Discord and into the, um, into the fleet itself. If you have somebody, a friend or a family member that you know that plays Elite Dangerous, who's kind of on the fence about joining a squadron, if you're happy here, invite them right in. We're very welcoming. Oh, then. So you recognize. That board, try and try and refresh the board, yeah. Alright, I'll let you guys get back to it. I just wanted to jump in and... No, thanks, Victor. That's awesome, man. Thanks for popping in, bro. You got it. Fly safe. Okay. Okay, so then your... The board, so, if you, so it seems like in the training area, like if you... You wait too long on the board, it tends to like fuck yeah. it. Like, Is that Victor best score? And I did my job. Now I can fly in peace. Can I? Can I owe my allegiance <laughs> to thee? Yes, you may swear to my greatness. Oh, I will say my greatness is better than your greatness. Well, I would think that that could depend on the level of alcohol in one's bloodstream. How about your combat readiness? I suck at combat, but my mind as far as strategy. You have in just a crate. How about that? You would probably win. You would probably win. Crit. But I would see. Here's the thing, right? Knowing that you're a little more better at combat, I would take out the ship that is the cheapest to lose, which would be my Viper. So it's a matter of strategy, man. Oh, that's actually smarter because the fucking, the fucking, uh, uh, shotguns suck against fucking, um, uh, vipers. The fucking, um, oh, what the fuck are they called? Frag cannons? Yeah, there you go. Frag cannons suck against vipers.
It's true, the bigger the ship, uh, the better the frack cannon. Yeah, those are big ship killers for sure. Oh, Adama. What's up, man? So I know I told Zephy, but I forgot to tell you. After everybody uh, got tired that night that we were roaming in Desiat, um, everybody that was in the system currently, especially those FDLs that we were given a hard time, they uh, they were getting pretty salty, and so they uh, they called me out, and I was uh, I was pretty much the only one left in system. So like, yo, come fight, come fight, one on one, no ganks. And so I had another one on one with one of those guys, another FDL. And uh, that would be two for two for me. Fantastic, man. Yeah, so that was that was pretty good. The, uh, you know, I don't have any doubt that uh, that those rails are fucking devastating, especially with the cancels. But uh, I'm having I'm having quite a bit of luck with uh, with those burst lasers. The burst lasers, uh, long range, I put. Uh, one of the large hard points and two of the mediums is it's it's able to to give me the opportunity to really keep the pressure on, which is which well, is that's really, the whole really point. Cool. Yeah, that's that's the whole point of the rail guns, right? Um, you, you, like so, you you want to be able to put long range damage on on the outside of the of the straight, just yep. for the, but. The, the reason that I say rail guns okay, is because that's the max DPS, right? Then yep. you can also, if you if you're having trouble hitting with the rail guns, it's kind of besides the point. So I, right, I right, like right. burst lasers, pulse lasers. I would usually recommend fixed because that's going to start to get you to learn how to use rail guns. If you go gimbaled, you'll never learn. Like that's kind right. of the because like the the debate is not whether or not burst are better than rails because that's a moot point it's whether or not you can use them right yep. but yeah i think the i threw the gimbals the on it, yeah, it, yeah yeah I, go ahead i threw the gimbals on uh simply because they were they were all engineered and ready to go and i needed something with a higher higher dps than what i was using because those rails i had were stock i definitely want to get better at the rails for sure um, and I think that instead of engineering some fixed uh, burst lasers, I think I'm, I'm going to uh, try getting used to the, the fixed rails. Uh, you know, so I'll engineer those before I engineer some kind of fixed, uh, fixed burst. But if we go roaming before I have that shit ready, then I'm going to probably stick with the burst for now. I just want to be sure that the weapon itself is, uh, is able to put out the DPS that's necessary to keep up in a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh well, I think so. yeah. I mean, because you're you don't really do that for the. It's like the. It's not the why, right? The the why yeah. you do that is to be able to prevent recharge. And like when you're fighting an FTL, like they're usually with prismatic, so you're not really running into that anyways. But the whole point is just to be able to continually keep damage on the shield so it doesn't recharge right right and then when you get close you want the frag so that you can drop yep. a fuck ton of dps on them and then again yep. when you're when you're down the back end of the strafe you're able to just keep constant pressure on them, constant pressure the whole time during the fight right that's the the reasoning right well, yeah that's I, the beautiful I, thing i, I see the, the real gun says like okay three you're engaging close range we'll do the spell that's not being targeted we identify the guy that's not being targeted he slips out, he fucking is good with rails, number one, and then as soon as he like kind of slips out with the rails, he's canceling uh, cell banks in the target, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think the only the only reason that not having canceling worked out for me is because not only are the, the bursts set up to be just like basically, you know, it's a battle of attrition for those for the guys that I fight with the with the setup that I have because it's just consistent DPS and consistent defense too with those with those by weaves. He only got me down to like uh, I think it was like sixty five percent hull or something like that. So I had I still had quite a bit more fight left before I was you know it would have been called. I mean he gave me a good fight, but still the defense is like it's beautiful on that thing with those by weaves. You just you know. I think he went through five or six shield cycles with me, which was, you know, great. Which all would have been canceled out 
how you can proficient with rails. Oh no, I mean, my, my shields went down and then came back up five or six times during the fight because of the because of me using by oh moves. you were yeah. talking about his I mean, no he he i think i i exhausted his banks um because toward the end there he uh he had plenty of opportunity to bank during during that last uh the last pass where i brought his shields down and he just never did so i think i actually exhausted his uh his shield cell bank ammunition you know, uh, which what baffles me is because well, why are we not practicing like fucking even in like uh, PVE situations, flying together as a wing and calling out targets and fucking doing that shit? We are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, are we really? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're not I've doing done, it. I've done two sessions so far. I want to continue it. Um, yeah. Yeah, so like, yeah, we have been. Um, mm -hmm. It's just yeah, the it's, other it's day a... we went to live fire, right? Like, yeah. live fire is always going to be more uh, more of a learning experience than any type of uh, training. But no, we, we have been trying to, to push training ops and... Yep. You know, I, I, I think that part of it is, is just scheduling and organization and making it public within the fleet that there is availability for training and then do the training outside of the member lounge you know go into a wing and say we're going to be in this wing doing this training and this is the only thing we're going to talk about you know what i'm saying even if it's even if it's uh uh skirmishes against each other Right, right, which that's, is what it's primarily been. Yeah, which is, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, Victor, but scroll down to the bottom of the, uh, the Discord. I created a whole new section called the Huskers Raiders, which is uh, which is intended to be a PvP training center. Which is what oh, that's, uh, that's that's awesome, man. Mm -hmm, yeah. I, I got, I put, so I put in the info section, I put a bunch of uh, meta builds that I would like people to have, which is kind of like going to be the entry level like i don't even want to talk to you unless you're flying one of those ships with at least close to one of those builds and once you've got that done i'd be willing to train you that was kind of the way that i because that I was kind is of done the way with everybody's to go saying, adama yeah. that is definitely the way to go hit set a goal as as a build type then once you've reached that goal then the training comes in right yeah yep. and that's we we've been successful we've been more successful than we've ever been with it um i think there is now five of us that are that are starting to train uh so we had one really good training session um which a lot of people felt better at you know after we were done and then i think i don't think we did we do a i'm not sure if we did a second Holy one or not but um shit. well we did a like an impromptu second one when we did the when you guys did the uh invasion on the that, cz that must be what i was thinking of that's right yeah that was the second second like technical session um the first one was kind of like formal, like, okay, we're going to show up and we're going to do this. And then the second one was like, oh, surprise, we're, we're training. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, like on the weekend, we had more EDF commanders out doing PvP than I've ever seen in my entire time with the EDF. So it yeah, was, we uh, had, it's, it's... Uh, at the peak, what was it, 10, 10 mm -hmm. uh, concurrent? Yeah, 10 commanders in Desiat. <laughs> the EDF, we owned Desiat, man, that night. There was nobody that... Nobody could fucking push us out. It was fantastic. Ten EDF commanders owned Desiat for at least three hours. So nope. many salty tears. So many. Mm -hmm. So many. That that was a really good feeling. Man. There, there was nobody. Could, nobody touched us. <laughs> for at least three hours. EDF owned Desiat. That's an, that's an awesome feeling. We'll have to try to do that again a bit later in the night because it looked like the real, the real ganky guys came out around the time that we were actually uh, calling it quits. Like I know my my contact with the Baran boys came came online pretty much as soon as everybody went to bed. You know, I love popping into a system with multiple stars. I wish the physics of the game 
and the graphics of the game would better represent more to true life at what I am actually looking at. Two stellar bodies, two suns, so close together that you could you there's no flying between them, right? But what the game doesn't represent is how the one stellar body would start to would be pulling material off the other stellar body. Yeah, it's called gravimetric shearing. Yeah, it doesn't show it, but even though it doesn't show it, you can imagine what it. There are systems that are like this, and it mm -hmm. is. I always love popping into these systems. Yeah, the orbital period for those stars would actually be uh, something that you could you could probably see, like just by sitting still, like uh, you know, a light year away. You could you could see them uh, going around each other. It'd actually be quite a dangerous place to be. Like, this would be, like, an awesome screenshot right now. Like, if, if I would say this. If you could see it on my YouTube channel, you'd be, like, wow. Mm -hmm. It's funny you started talking about a uh, a multiple star system at pretty much at the same point that I was jumping through a binary system as well. Shock like waiting? That's why you don't know about it. Ah. The shock in game? No, he said he was going to promote Niles and he hasn't yet. Okay. So. Oh, I think we're waiting to do the. You know, the, the, the one meeting and then go from there. And oh, no, no, not not that. We were going to fast-track the promotion process because we have a pressing op that we want help with. with me. Oh, I okay. I, I don't know if I can handle more than one promotion within a span of time here, man. <laughs> well, this is the kind of promotion we don't talk about. It's just that oh. everything here has that same promotion. So. Oh, okay. It's, it's more access than promotion. Gotcha. Hmm. Well, why don't, why don't so, you let Sorindo do it, you know? Yeah. Or, yeah, you know, if Sorindo right? wants to talk to Victor about it, like, let's let's uh, let's respect the chain of command here. <laughs> but you see, the problem is, is he forgot to do it, and it's now, like, really early in the morning for shock time. Ah. Uh, is it? it uh, four o'clock in the yeah. morning for him. Four o'clock oh. in the morning. Hence the oh, reason right. why I want to expand the... Shadow Marshal. Hmm. Basically, what happened, Niles, is somebody pissed us off last night. Ooh, okay. And and we and we want to teach a lesson in humility. So, there's that. <laughs> you never fuck with the EDF. Righto. Should wait till shock gets up though. Probably. Um, I'm gonna do some some legitimate um, 
legitimate data collection on this hotspot area, I want to run several tests, so that's probably what I'm going to be doing today, unless I'm going to be needed somewhere else, because I am, in, you know, I'm going to be out in the pipe nebula, so is this something that we're going to have to uh, put, our, put our attention on today? Uh, it's not a huge deal today. No. Okay, okay, cool. Tomorrow? Probably. Depending. So, to, yeah, tomorrow I'll be available um, probably after 2 or 3 o'clock, because the semester actually starts today. Oh um, my goodness. You're yeah, back my, to school. No, I'm back to school. I have uh, Calculus 2 uh, today at, uh, at 6.30, and then tomorrow I have... Uh, early American history and Spanish. Those are the only three classes I'm taking this semester because I'm not going to be taking any of my physics coursework remotely. That's just not going to, that's not going to happen. I need to be in a classroom talking to a teacher face to face if I'm going to take a physics class. So I purposely took easy classes this semester because calculus is it's math. You know, if, if you're giving me pure math, I don't care where I am, what I'm doing, who I'm talking to, what the environment is. I love math. So I'll 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 take a math. I'll take the hardest math course you can throw at me for the level I'm at right now. And I'll do it remotely. That's fine. But physics is not pure math. You know, it's it's uh, it's a little bit more than that. So I need to take that in the classroom. Okay, so, so I am looking at something outside my screen, mm. you know, outside my window, and I'm having a hard time deciding whether it's in system or a bunch of stars collected together in a certain direction to make it look like something special. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I can tell you one one easy way to actually uh, determine if it's something that you can find on your galaxy map or if it's in system. So the first test, right, is to, to get to a high speed in supercruise and see if those objects actually uh, move when you move in supercruise inside the system, because that means, yes, they are in the system, right? And then if they don't, uh, I use a method that I go to my galaxy map and I go to a system that's literally directly above me on the galactic plane. And then once that's selected, I then in regular space or in supercruise, doesn't matter, uh, make sure that, that that target is oriented directly above me. And then I can orient myself uh, according to the galaxy map. So whatever I'm looking at, if it's you know 20 degrees to my right and 30 degrees down below me, I can now use that same degree measurement in the galaxy map and look at exactly what it is that I think I'm looking at, select that, and then if the, the target ends up in regular space or in supercruise, then I know that's what, that's what it is that I'm looking at. I've used that technique a number of times to actually find something on the galaxy map that I only see in the skybox out in supercruise. It's quite effective. Hopefully I didn't make a mess of that explanation. <laughs> you know... You're fucking see how many percentage of pain height your target is. What is it that you're seeing, Victor? Like a cluster of stars? Yeah, an extreme cluster of stars. Mm -hmm. if, if I had to describe it, it looks like poison ivy. <laughs> now... I'm trying to figure well, out if it's a nebula one. Be. Oh, good. The star in the uh, in the mining system is actually a K class, so we can scoop. That's awesome. Are you in Zephy's private group or no? I'm in Adamas uh, currently. I'm jumping into the uh, the system right now.
Well, let me know when you switch, because I can't tell fucking what I'm looking at, because I'm so fucking drunk right now. <laughs> 17. I think what I want to do today is a little bit of independent uh, data. Collecting data because I want to see which is better, that triple or that double. So I think I want to spend like an hour in the triple, see what my yield can be. I'm, I'm going to be like uh, collecting every single rock that I prospect. I'll collect what the percentage is so that I have something to actually compare to, not just yield, but also what I'm hitting out there, what I'm what I'm prospecting. So I think the next couple of hours will be me doing that. I don't have too much time today, so I think that'll be... Yeah, I got about like an hour and a half right now that I'll be able to devote. So I'll probably just do the triple first, and then later tonight, after I get out of math class, I think I'll do... I think I'll do that, uh, that triple and see what I can get. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna actually keep track of this. Probably just do it on Google Sheets. Yeah, I gotta go put up a deer stand. Oh, nice. Are you going out? Um, huh? Trevor, didn't you just say you were drunk? Yeah. You really think this is a great idea? To do what? To climb a tree? Um. No, but yes. I <laughs> just wanted to throw it. I mean, if you think it's a good idea, I mean, I'm, I'm not one to stand in anybody's way. But okay, when you said you were pretty, you're, pretty drunk, you're not, you're not as scared, right? I've only had like 17 beers so far, right? Well, if you think that's a good idea to go climb a tree in your current state, then I, I, I'm not your mother, but maybe just have a think on that. Hmm. I don't think she's my mom. <laughs> See, these are the times that are priceless. Well, I should be pretty safe. I got a dog that's going to go with me. Yeah, if anything, the dog can give you CPR. I got two dogs, actually. Like, I got one that's a Australian Shepherd. Australian cattle dog mix, and I got one that's purebred Australian cattle dog, right? Both of them are probably smarter than me. So, when I'm drunk. So, yeah, it should be good. Wow, it didn't take anybody. It, the community is out. They are here. See, already. Not so bad that they, I couldn't find a parking spot for my carrier. So, yeah. I mean, it's not that bad. 9, 10, 11, 12. There are 41 carriers in the system already. Whoa. Yep. It's the, I think it's the first day. I think uh, Blazewick said that he got the email uh, regarding the post for this on the Reddit uh, this morning. So people are already here out in force. Do a quick FSS and I'll get down to business.
You know, I think I'm going to move that stand. Seems like my dog is going to go. Fresh air could be good for you. Just saying. The dogs always want to go. They always want to go. Everywhere. All it takes is for you to like move your feet and my dogs run at the back door. <laughs> <laughs> all you have to do is move your feet. Yeah, mine too. They just want to go chase the ball. That's right. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Later. Alright, Trev. Alright, Trev. So are we taking bets on if this ends badly? <laughs> I wouldn't want to, to be honest. <laughs> I'd feel bad I'd feel bad if I was right either way, you know? <laughs> oh dear. It will all be okay. Have faith. We'll be fine. Listen, if there's anything that I have faith in, it's not going to be a drunk redneck. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just calling it how I see it, you know? Well, I have no doubt he'll walk away. I just wonder how many bruises he's going to have walking away from you. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> or if he's going to remember how he got the bruises the next day. I'd like to figure out how I can... There is a cluster of stars. It's definitely in the skybox. It's not in system, right? There is a cluster Are of you, stars uh... so close together yeah. and so bright. Um could you could you stream on uh on Discord? Yeah, I, I think I could. Hold on. Look at a half hour button. I've actually run into uh, something very, very similar. All right, let's see. It may be hard to see in a, because of the way that uh, my monitors are. Yeah. No, I can I can see that it's it's that little that bright dot to just to the right of your uh, your crosshairs, right? Yep. Okay. I'm gonna Where, put. It... What uh, nebula are you in right now? Uh, North American nebula. Nebula. Okay. Let's open the let's open the galaxy map real quick. All right, so let's let's find a section in the galaxy map, like a star, any star, but it has to be directly above you uh, on the galactic plane. So whatever, like if you if you switch over to uh, going up and down only uh, in terms of like navigating the the galaxy map. Like, you just got to find something, like, literally on top of you. Um, any star. So I would go straight up on the galaxy map until you hit any star. And then, yeah, just uh, select that. Don't uh, don't navigate toward it, but just select it with the uh, that little arrow icon. So that way you can... Now when you go back to the skybox and your ship, 
I see what you're saying because then yep. you'll it'll show, and then you can you I get it you can because orient then yourself. Yep. orient yeah. So we'll try to do that. So now we'll put that that uh, compass marker directly above you. And you see, now here's the thing. I'd have yeah. to flip over because it's directly below me. Uh huh. Yeah. So do a do with like a not so much a 360, but almost like a 180 until that compass mark is directly. All right. Cool. Now see if you can yaw in either direction so that you can you can find out where the galactic center is. Because if you can find the galactic center, then you know, you'll know where the, uh, so it's over that way. So the galactic center is to your right. And the plane is above you. So this looks like it's going to be, it's kind of hard with the nebula right there, but that looks like the galactic center over there. Yeah, the further away from the center you get, the thinner, the smaller it the less you have of it to, to use as a reference. Well, you know the the nebula is directly to your right there, so that's yeah. a, that's a good that's a good thing to. So let's so let's open the map again. I just want to your to where I, I see it again. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put it right on the dot. Now I'll bet you anything that's a group of carbon stars. Or a group of O-type stars. So, with the nebula to the right, so like right there. So zoom in a bit. See, so get those stars back on the map. It also might help to uh, to take those uh, the the what you call it. Yeah, the lines. How do you take the lines off? Uh, you go to uh, navigation, yep, right there, and then deselect those two selections right there. So make sure that those those boxes are empty. What these two? Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. So my guess is it's going to be a group of carbon stars. Um, so we'll we'll look for and then go to uh, go to map and then go to realistic. Uh, one tab to the left. And then go to realistic on the far left up there. There you go. So that that'll give you the stars as they appear in the skybox according to their color and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's going to be a group of stars approximately 200 light years away that are going to be very very clearly a like a a, a grouping. And they're going to be a light blue color. Um, that's typically what happens because um, what you call it. Uh, Stellar Forge, which is the the program that populates the the stars in in Galaxy, they are it, it is kind of fooled in one way because it uses real stellar cartography, um, but stellar cartography isn't an exact science when you're talking about a certain distance away from Sol. So at, at a certain point, it might take one actual star location and then multiply it which is probably what you're looking for. So while you're doing that, I'm actually going to start looking in my galaxy map as well, because now, now you got me curious. You said you're in the North American. Uh, North American sector. LC dash V C two dash two. And that's a nebula that's in between the bubble and and the the galactic center, right? Yeah. So did you hear what happened last night, Victor? Uh, no, not the full story. Oh, dear. So we had a new member come in into the reception, right? And uh, we were questioning him like we usually do. And he said that he had also joined uh, Void's Discord. 
So, I mean, I don't shit talk, and I'm, like, pretty humble, even though we kick the shit out of them, right? Um, and Fortuna, I mean, they, they, they basically did not even pose us a threat. It was, it was uh, almost too easy for us to defeat them, right? Um, <sighs> so, we say, you know, out of respect for Void and for us, uh, you know, like, if you want to join us, just leave their Discord, right? Because we don't need people in their Discord and create an issue, right? Because then they find out you're in our Discord, we're in there, you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, you see, and this, the guy gets kind of sassy, right? Well, I don't see why I, can, I can't I can be in multiple Discords, blah, 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 blah. So I just say, you know, I just say, okay, well, you know, we're going to have to reject your application at this time. You know, thanks for looking at us, and we kicked him out of the Discord. No big deal, right? But Shock, you see, he has access to fucking Void's Discord. <laughs> He's so, so he goes he's he, such a spy. Oh, uh, it's actually not even a spy move. They let him in. Like he's he's in under the name Serindo on their Discord. I, I would like to point out that it, this is going out on YouTube. So. Oh shit! Yeah. Is there any? Oh crap! I should shut up then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah shut thanks. Up. Thanks for letting me know that before I open my. Mouth. Well, you have to assume <laughs> at this point anything I'm doing, I'm live streaming. So don't let any str- I mean, listen, you could say the situation. I mean, I think it's good that people see the politics of the game, actually, and, and, and the interaction between certain uh, squadrons and other squadrons. I think this is the type of thing that Elite needs more of. You know what I'm saying? So, Victor, oh um, do me a favor. Uh, go to your galaxy map and type in a... S- uh, a, a, a star system for me. I think I might have found your uh, your smudge. Hello. Hey, WJ. Go ahead. Give, up, me, give me the name. So crescent space sector space. And let me know when you're Wait ready. Wait a minute. Spell crescent. Uh, C R E S C E N T. Crescent space. Sector. Space. Go ahead. Uh, L X dash T space B as in Bravo three dash zero. And why don't you go ahead and just select any of the stars over in that area? And then go back to your skybox and see if it's if it's got that smudge highlighted. Because there is a large group of carbon stars in that area. And it's directly in the same direction from what I can tell as your nope, skybox. No, that's to the right that's of me. That's not it. Okay. But that's good reference. That is the, to the right of me. Okay, good. So I would have to say that a 90 from there... Oh, so that's directly to your right. Okay. Yeah, that's and right on the same plane. It's neither neither up or, or down. You know what I'm saying? It's a correct. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so tell me what happened, Adama, but just oh, in dear. your mind, be strategic. How many people are watching you right now? Uh, zero. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. So I, I have not spoken then. Okay, no. so, okay. Now, so this this gentleman proceeded to tell his his you know because he's also on this other Discord server. Uh, he proceeded to tell them what a joke we were. And I mean, this is like a new guy, so like I don't really care. You want to like I get told like our faction sucks every day on Reddit. Like it's not like okay, whatever. We're recruiting. It's gonna happen. Not everybody likes it. It's fine, right? Whatever. You got to. Ju- so the way that Void responds to that. Oh shit! I said the name again. Um, is is that? Um, <clears throat> damn it! I'm trying to like be all strategic. But so the way that they respond to that, instead of just being tactful about it, they said, "Oh yeah, no, no, no. Uh, they don't like us very much, and we kicked their ass in the BGS, like you know, so that you know they don't like us because we had some disputes over some territory and we kicked their asses." And the opposite of that is exactly true. Right? Is we did have some disputes over territory, but we kicked the living bejesus out of. Them. Right, which is why we currently own Fortuna and not them, right? <laughs> at, at any rate, so we decided that instead of like causing an incident, we we're going to run a little bit of a blacklight operation. And I just and see the naming. 
Oh, you see, I, I cannot be trusted with this. <laughs> this is so yeah, probably a better time to uh, to talk about it other than when we're live streaming. Mm, yeah. But anyway, so that's the situation. So we're going to, um, yeah, so, so we're going to, uh, yeah. Respond to not too crazy. Yeah, not too crazy, but just you know, go in and kind of just teach them a little bit of a lesson in humor. We're gonna have a, we're gonna have a board meeting. Uh, there will be several uh, several slideshows, and we'll talk about uh, things like synergy and and uh, PowerPoint. PowerPoint. And, I have PowerPoint. <laughs> and branding, and uh, we'll you know we'll give them what for. And can I bring my uh, bullshit bingo cards as well? <laughs> that was the funniest meeting I've ever been in. That was um, we had a production meeting every Thursday, and the night shift. I was a night shift supervisor, and we had a day shift supervisor. And we arranged things because we were bored with these meet. We were both bored with these meetings that were never getting anywhere. Have a stand-up fight. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we all file in, we, we all file into the meeting room, and the manager says this, and the manager says that, and the inspector says this, and the company secretary reads some minutes back. And I say, any other business? And I say, yeah, the bloody day shift don't do their job properly. And the day shift stand, the day shift guy stands up and says, yeah, the bloody night shift could do their jobs. Yeah, well, you blah 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 blah. And we're both standing nose to nose, leaning over the table, shouting at each other. Well, everybody, well, everybody well, the manager's going, no, no, man, no, man, man. <laughs> the, the, the overall production manager's laughing his guts out. The secretary's going like, <laughs> trying to keep up with us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, that was fun, that was. <sighs> See, at my job, that something like that happened after a uh, after a meeting, except it, it, it wasn't just a shouting match. The one, one guy pushed the other one into a fucking mop closet, and then they had to go. Oh no, we did. We, it was all pre-arranged. Me and me and the day shift guy, we, we were drinking buddies, so mm, yeah, but yeah. we were just so bored with these bloody meetings, and they never they never do what we wanted them to. We we bring up the problems, and they never sort them out. Yeah, meetings aren't a place to solve problems; they're just a place to talk about problems, right? But it was an, there was another one that worked for a job long, long, long time ago. <clears throat> It was um, it was one of these hooray Henry, you know, university educated super duper types, and uh, he was going on about all this high technology stuff. We're going to you know, go for the high tech customers, blah 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 blah. And my friend, um, who is one of the other machinists, actually works for another company I, I work for at the moment. Uh, he stood up and said, yeah, this is all well and good, but how are we going to do you know, six-month-old technology on machines that are 50 years old? <laughs> <laughs> and oh, easy to, they had the senior guys down from um, London as well in the meeting, and they just, they just looked at this, this Hooray Henry type going, he's got the fucking point, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. Hey-ho, such is life. Anyway. Continue on. Do you hear about the new hotspot? Uh, yeah, I just, I just saw, I just saw it. Um, pipe bowl sector, somewhere or other. Yeah, I'm actually going out there to test both spots. Sorry, unit. What were you saying? Uh, is it just me, or is the menu in the center of the screen for Victor? Oh, Victor's got a, a, a special display, so he's got a really, really high aspect ratio. Uh, yeah, I run triple monitors as one monitor. Oh, you Niles. I'll come out with you. I am currently in Adama's uh, private group. I think right now, for today, I'm not going to be out here just to collect. I'm going to try to uh, acquire a little bit of independent data to see which two of the two spots are better. I'm gonna give 
one one spot, 45 minutes, see what the yield is, and I'm going to document all of the rocks that I prospect to see what uh, what kind of uh, what kind of rocks I run into. Um, I'm going to document every single one that I hit with a prospector over 45 minutes, and then I'll do the same thing for the double, and I'll see which of the two are providing a better yield and uh, present data later on. But I think just uh, just for the sake of uh, control, I think I want to do that uh, solo, just so uh, there's fewer variables uh, to keep track of. Right. The system is pipe bowl, pipe bowl sector, uh, golf, golf, Yankee, Charlie two. That's correct. Right, yeah, I'll just mark that. Up. Okay, cheers. A bit far out for me. Yeah, likewise. I think it was about uh, almost twelve jumps. I think it was about twelve jumps with my uh, mining anaconda. Oh, it's 12 jumps. Cover it's only got a small fuel scoop on it. Yeah, I went out with a class 4 um, just because I actually sacrificed one of my class 5's uh, class 5 slots for a uh, an FSD booster just so I didn't have to spend two hours getting out here. So I only have six collectors, but that should be fine. Well, I run six collectors, so no issue with that. Mind you, I've only got a class one mining laser. Yeah, I'm coming out with two class two mining lasers. But I am armed to the teeth, so that's that's the trade-off. I think I'm getting close to if you if you look at my screen I think I'm getting pretty much close to what those are and I think you're right they are a cluster of stars but that close together that is I mean right I, so that... this is this is what happens right so if if from earth we can see one star um and we write down that data you can see this actually if you if you zoom out um and go to Bernard's loop. I'll show you. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Go to Bernard's loop for a second, and then zoom in on the center of Bernard's loop uh, with the uh, the Orion Nebula. So Bernard's loop is down in the. Oh. So if you zoom in just a bit, you'll see Bernard's loop to the on the left, literally where your uh, your menu is currently. So a little bit further, a little bit further. Okay, it just popped up on I the see left it. there. Yeah. So head over there. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So there are, uh, it's if you, once you get really close on it, it turns out that those clusters are like spears of stars, and they always point toward one direction, and that's back to Sol. So if you go to the Orion Nebula in the center of Bernard's Loop, it's actually back out a little bit. I think it might be that one down there. I'm having trouble reading your screen. Yeah, that's the one. So you see that spear of yeah. stars there? Yeah. So that happens when there's stellar there's real life stellar cartography about one star and the computer can't decide where to put it. So it takes that real life stellar uh uh stellar area and it multiplies it in 
on the z axis according to where it was at so the depth axis right so it multiplies it many 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 times and you'll see spears like that all over this all over the galaxy map and they always if you if you looked down that spear as if it was the barrel of a gun in the opposite direction that you're facing now what you're going to see at the other end is soul yeah so in other words that th th those representations due to the stellar forge engine which makes that populates the uh, 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 galaxy in game, it that could actually be one star, but it represents it as multiple stars. Exactly, because there's some yeah. kind of anomaly in the data that it can't resolve. So it, it resolves it by making it multiple stars. So that's probably the cluster that you're, it's, that's the case with the cluster that you're looking for as well. And my guess is because of the coloration in the skybox, it's going to be a cluster of carbon stars. which again are a very, very light blue, almost white. So I've actually always wondered this. It doesn't seem like I'm getting any NPC spawns in this system. When I've dropped down into the, uh, when I've dropped down into the field here, and I wonder if that's because we're far enough away from the bubble that the game doesn't actually pop. Because if like, okay, let's say you find a pay night hotspot, like. 2,000 years, uh, 2,000 light years away from the bubble, it's unlikely you're going to find any kind of NPC piracy out there, right? And I don't think the game would populate an NPC pirate that far away from the bubble. So my my question then is if it if it populates pirates in the Call 285 sector, but it doesn't populate pirates 2,000 light years away in a hotspot, where is the border? 
where it stops populating pirates, right? That's that's the real question. I would suspect about a thousand light years out. Like, I'm not I'm not getting any NPC activity at all when I drop down into this ring, and we're only this is only 400 light years away from the bubble, right? So maybe it's a little bit closer. Distance to where uh, I think that's right. Right, right. I think I found it. Cool. What, uh, what is it? Look on my screen. Look at this cluster of stars. There are four systems, and they're literally almost right on top of each other. Right? Am I right or am I wrong? Does that is that four separate systems or one system with four stars? Can you go left or right to see if those other stars are selectable? No, it looks like that's one system. So that's a quaternary system. So there's four very bright stars in the same system, I think is what that is representing there. Ah, you're going to go check it out, eh? Ah, no, it's not it. And that's not it. No, no, wait, no, wait. That's 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 the route to it. So, well, you're really cl you're either going to pass through it or you're going to get close to it, but I think that you're very Oh, yeah, you just got a really good look at it that way. Oh, yeah, I see that now. You can see it's a spear, just like I was talking about. So that's another spear, and it's almost certainly pointing towards Sol. And I'm almost positive now that they are, it is a group of carbon stars. I can see it pretty clearly now. I'm going to head over there. All right. I mean, it's nine, nine jumps away. Yeah, might as well. I mean, to where, if I keep going in that one direction... Yeah, I would just continuously check the skybox every jump to make sure, because it could be further, or it could be closer than what you're currently navigating towards. Yeah. Right? They look to be quite a bit closer, so you're probably going to pass them by, so they're going to all of a sudden be at your six at a certain jump. I don't know which jump, but... Uh... But if they keep, if that keeps being in the, in my, in my front view mirror, like it, if every time I, I, I look to, to the next system and that's there, I'm heading in the right direction, essentially. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, there it is.
Oh. Shit, sorry. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I forgot I left that turned on. Shift drive charging. Shift drive charging.
All right, guys, I'm going to be AFK for a second. I'll be right back. And I'm back. Welcome back. Thank you.
anything illegal available. I think there's always something available to do that's illegal. You mean on the task list? Well, it does say something along the line. I'm just wondering if there's any narcotics or anything like that available. If there's one thing I've learned about narcotics is that they're always available. It just depends on how hard you want to look for them. Well, no, they're sometimes ex All joking aside, though, why are you looking to do some smuggling or something? Oh, no reason. Not that I know of. I actually haven't even taken a look at the task list yet today. I'm trying to devote my time to uh, researching these hotspots. I think that'll be all I'm doing today. Yo, what's up, everyone? What's up, Dang? How's everyone doing? 
Good, man. How you doing? Great. Heck yeah. Uh, just a warning for anybody jumping in. Um, this is being broadcast on YouTube live.
All right, guys, I gotta go. I'll be back later. All right. Yeah, man, stay safe. Ship drive charging. Let everybody break out in a thrilling conversation all at once, please. You got it. Fuel scooping complete. WJ, are you still there? <laughs> 